Earlier this year, in my home state of Arizona, the Supreme Court ruled that the LDS Church can lawfully choose to not cooperate with investigations of CSA or can refuse to provide documents pertaining to said abuser's spiritual confessions if there are any. So essentially what this ruling does is strengthen the clergy penitent privilege, which we know as ex-Jehovah's Witnesses that that is a major hurdle when it comes to holding these major corporate religions responsible for the part that they play in perpetuating the abuse of children. But what you may not know is that this decision actually came as a consequence of a horrible crime in a happy little town. Can, can I get your name and where you're from if you, if you don't mind? I'm Kai. Kai, can I get spelling for you? Straight buddy? out of Dogtown, K-A-I. I'm Jesus Christ and I can do anything I f***ing want to. Hola Jula, thank you so much for clicking onto this video. And if you are new here, well then, hi, hello, my name is Kai. And if you're coming back to my channel, well then, it is so great to see you, babe. Here on my channel, I aim to share my experience as a person who has left the Jehovah's Witnesses organization and what it was like to grow up in a high control Christian cult. Before we get into today's story, I did want to remind you that this is a sensitive topic and if you're not in the headspace to where you can take this kind of content in right now, perfectly understandable, no worries babe, please click off and go find something else to watch. But for those of you who wish to continue, this is the story of Paul Douglas Adams. Clear to me this is compulsion had a, had a hold of me. And again, I'm not, I'm not trying to sh shift blame, I'm not trying to say, oh I couldn't control myself, but I, I do have a problem. Yeah. And, and I'm not trying to say, you know, that made me do it, no. Bisbee, Arizona. Nestled away in the southeastern corner of Arizona lays a quirky little town called Bisbee. Its storybook storefronts line the iconic Main Street where artists come to sell their wares and folks come to lay their cares. See, Bisbee is like one of those places where it's like, okay, it's like cute for a day, but then like, give me the hell out of there. You know what I mean? It's like Vegas for pretentious people. Tiny but mighty, Bisbee is home to many well-known people, such as Earl Hindman, best known for playing Wilson on the series Home Improvement. Clarence Mattern, a 1946 outfielder for the Chicago Cubs, and now home to the worst comedian ever, Doug Stanhope. <laughs> well, they can't all be winners, especially proven by another man. A man who would only be known for his horrible crimes. Paul Douglas Adams was a resident of Bisbee, a former Border Patrol officer and a member of the LDS Church. Paul lived in Bisbee with his wife, Liaza Adams, and their small children. He must have enjoyed his seemingly charmed life, which is what makes what happened to him in 2017 all the better. At this point in the story, we actually have to travel all the way across the globe to a country called New Zealand. So the year prior, the New Zealand authorities were made aware of this graphic and disgusting video making its rounds in the communities known for purchasing CP. This sparked an investigation, trying to find the girl in this video and bring whoever was doing this to her to justice. And it even became an international event that led the authorities right to the doorstep of none other than Paul and Liaza Adams. And the happy little town of Bisbee, Arizona would soon uncover a dark and twisted secret held behind closed doors. 
The girl featured in Paul's video was unfortunately his own nine-year-old daughter, who was only 11 at the time of his arrest. And she lost both her father and her mother that day, and her and her siblings were actually turned over to the state. Eventually, they were adopted, and I just hope that they are so much happier with their new families. Once Paul was taken in, he sang like a bird. He confessed to posting the video, of course, to the act itself, but he shared a lot more with the authorities, a lot other details that I simply do not feel comfortable sharing, but let's just say that there was no such thing as too young to Paul Adams. Before he could be taken to trial and his victims could see justice served, he actually decided to end his own life. And I have no feelings about that at all. it was discovered that several years prior to this video even surfacing on the radar of the New Zealand authorities, far before that, Paul had actually confessed his sins to one of his Mormon bishops. And this bishop had no reason to report the abuse because he was not a mandated reporter. So just like the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints functions more like a business than they do a church because they are a corporate Christian cult. And for whatever reason, they both just can't seem to get a handle on the safeguarding of children. I'm not a Mormon, I've never been a Mormon, but I grew up around a lot of Mormons. And honestly, barring some like differences in theology, Watchtower is pretty much running the same grift. So Paul had made his bishop or his clerk aware of what was happening in his home. And because, again, because this bishop was not a mandatory reporter, he really didn't have any reason to say anything. And in fact, he was even instructed by one of their fancy little lawyers to keep it a secret. Is this ringing any bells for anyone? No, just me? Okay. The LDS church went as so far as to file an appeal and successfully file that appeal to keep one of their clerks from being compelled to testify against Paul Adams, saying that doing so would violate their clergy pen and privilege and therefore violate their First Amendment rights. That's the one they love to hide behind, but like, what about somebody's um, like right to not be in your church. I don't know. So after this victory, they actually filed another motion in late 2022 to further protect clergy pen and privilege, and that decision was granted in April of 2023, and here we are. And this is all just kind of really embarrassing as like a person who loves the state of Arizona. It's beautiful here. It's one of my favorite places I've ever lived, but like honestly, some of the people out here are like so smooth-brained. Like, there are so many people out here who are like, yes, protect children, we gotta keep keep them innocent, all this stuff, but then they also support bills like this that are literally just loopholes for predators to get away with crimes. I don't know, it just doesn't sound right. But the most terrible thing about this whole story, this whole situation, is the fact that Paul's original video has amassed millions upon millions of views so much so that the authorities can literally not scrub it offline like it's impossible like it's just so it's been transferred so many times copied so many times that it's just like out there forever and the fact alone that there's even millions of millions of people seeking out content like that is disturbing in and of itself but the bottom line is is that all of this could have been prevented Paul Adams could have been brought to justice so many years before any of this happened, before his daughter would be scarred for life in that way, at least in the way where she could literally never get that video taken down. 
It all could have been prevented if the same man who absolved Paul of his sins was the same man who brought him to justice for his crimes. But we know that that's something that is never going to change, or at least from their end. They're never going to willfully change this privilege. They're never going to, unless they're literally told that they have to be mandated reporters, they don't do it on their own. Instead, they turn to their own legal department who tells them to keep it a secret because if it's a secret, then, then you know, we're okay, everything's okay. Paul had privileges that his daughter simply did not, right? Like, Paul got to be protected. They looked out for him. They they helped him out, but nobody did anything for his daughter and a victim. They didn't do anything for this innocent child. And I just think that speaks volumes, not of just the LDS church, but of every church like this. That was just my thought, just my opinion, and just my video. So if you like this video, you can give it a like, and if you like me, well then you can subscribe to my channel where I'll be talking about whatever I want, whenever I want, because this is my channel and that's what we do here, baby. So subscribe, and as always, Chulas, I hope that you are having a beautiful, wonderful, amazing rest of your day.